Obstructive sleep apnea in children involves uh, uh, stoppage of airflow to the lungs during sleep. So kids who have sleep apnea uh, have pauses in breathing at night uh, on and off, as a result of which they don't get uh, good quality sleep. Uh, amongst the various causes of sleep apnea in children, the most common is enlargement of the tonsils and the adenoids. Uh, tonsils and adenoids are basically lymphoid tissue. Uh, tonsils are present in the back of your throat and you can see when you open up your mouth. Adenoids are present in the back of the nose and are not visible. Once they become bigger, uh, they basically obstruct the air flow going into the lungs. Uh, second most common cause of sleep apnea in children is obesity. Kids who are overweight or obese tend to have sleep apnea. The parents can come to know if the child is having sleep apnea uh, by a number of things. Number one, snoring is a sign of sleep apnea. Not all kids who snore have sleep apnea, but close to 10% of kids who snore actually ten are diagnosed with sleep apnea eventually. Number two, mouth breathing at night is another feature of sleep apnea. Kids who have big adenoids tend to breathe with their mouth open. Uh, number three is breathing pauses. So if you see a kid sleeping at night who pauses for a while and again starts breathing with a big snot, that's pretty classical of sleep apnea. Uh, during the day, the child might have uh, daytime sleepiness. He might be sleeping in the school. Uh, he might have issues uh, in concentration in the class. Um, he might have poor uh, attention uh, span in the class and all that can affect school performance. So all these basically practically point towards the child having a poor quality sleep at night and having sleep apnea. Uh, sleep apnea can be, uh, untreated sleep apnea can be very problematic. Um, uh, the various uh, effects of uh, sleep apnea in children include uh, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. In fact, 25% of kids who are diagnosed with ADHD uh, tend to have obstructive sleep apnea symptoms uh, and their learning disability and behavioral issues have been associated with obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, Bedwetting at night has been associated with sleep apnea. Uh, poor performance at school is associated with sleep apnea. And lastly, it can cause, uh, as the child grows, uh, hypertension and cardiac issues in adult life. The first thing in management of sleep apnea is to diagnose sleep apnea correctly. It's a, sleep apnea is pretty underdiagnosed in children. It's estimated close to 5% of children have sleep apnea. Uh, the one thing we recommend is getting a sleep study, which essentially involves uh, sleep, having the child sleep in a sleep lab. We monitor his breathing pattern, his heart rate, his brain activity, uh, and we can diagnose whether he's obstructing at night. Uh, for older kids, uh, we usually recommend just getting a video of the way the child sleeps. Uh, the management of sleep, the treatment of sleep apnea depends upon um, the cause of sleep apnea. Since tonsils and adenoids uh, are the major uh, factors in sleep apnea, taking them out is, uh, relieves the child of sleep apnea in close to 90% of the cases. So a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy is the most common thing we do for kids with sleep apnea. Uh, the second thing is uh, managing the weight. Kids who are overweight or a uh, needs to get involved in some lifestyle management programs uh, which we highly recommend and thirdly if the child is not a surgical candidate we can put them on a CPAP machine uh, which helps in breathing at night.